a little less than a week after Season 7 of Game of Thrones premiered to record-breaking numbers, HBO has released yet another trailer teasing audiences with scenes from the entire season. Most of the footage is what we would expect, major battles, a political struggle up north, and anti-Targaryen propaganda everywhere. But someone who has been largely absent from the show, and was mostly missing from this year's promotional material, pops up right at the end to throw a wrench into what we thought we know about Game of Thrones, Melisandre, in her first meeting ever with the mother of dragons Daenerys Targaryen, essentially drops a bit of Yoda-esque knowledge, there is, another, Targaryen, it's unclear what the Red Woman knows about Jon Snow's true parentage, but it's been clear ever since she met him in season 5 that Melisandre has been fascinated with the newly crowned king in the north. She seems to believe both Jon and Daenerys might be the prince who was promised, since, clearly, her original favorite didn't pan out. R.I.P. Stannis, this notion of dual chosen ones, if, indeed, that's what Melisandre is hinting at here, radically alters the favored narrative in George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire, that there is one messiah, Azor High Reborn, who will save the realms of men. Is Melisandre now saying there are two don't remember who Azor Ahai is well, if you have 16 minutes to spare, you can watch this fantastic, in-depth video explaining the whole Ahai myth. If you want a shorter version, thousands and thousands of years ago, there was something called the Long Night in which the others, aka White Walkers, laid waste to the realms of men during the long winter. According to legend, there was a hero who put a stop to the Long Night, and he was called by many names throughout the fictional lands of Westeros, Essos, and beyond. The prince that was promised, the last hero, the stallion who mounts the world, Azor Ahai, etc. These are probably all the same savior figure, and, according to a widespread prophecy, he's destined to be reborn and save the world once more. Melisandre was once operating under the assumption that Stannis Baratheon was that chosen one, born of smoke and salt, so many a Song of Ice and Fire readers bought into this popular chosen Ona theory. After all, every epic yarn has a similar figure, Jesus. Neo. The Chosen One, the Boy Who Lived, the Avatar, the Ring Bearer, the Great Lion, the Slayer, the Golden Child. For a long time, it seemed clear that Jon Snow was the one, why this gets a little complicated, so bear with me. One of the biggest efforts the show has made to indicate Jon's Chosen One status was that business he did with his sword at Hardhome. Like King Arthur or Godric Gryffindor, Azor Ahai has a legendary sword called Lightbringer. In the books, Samuel Tarley says, I found one account of the Long Night that spoke of the last hero, a.k.a. Azor Ahai, slaying others with a blade of dragon steel. Supposedly they could not stand against it. Melisandre spoke of the legend of Lightbringer back in Season 2, saying, In the ancient books, it is written that a warrior will draw a burning sword from the fire. In the books, though not the show, when he saved Lord Commander Jor Mormont's life from a white attack at Castle Black, Jon Snow set a fire that damaged Longclaw's hilt, melting silver on the bear's head pommel and burning the cross guard and grip. Mormont gave the sword to Jon, so the